fucked up. Let's talk about why they'll throw. So you know what I'm talking about. You got your ride all done, you're ready to take it out on your maiden voyage. You're driving around, you go up to a stoplight, some Honda Civic pulls up next to you, revving his engine, right? So you wanna clap back, you rev your engine, and oh, your belt came off. So now you're sitting on the side of the road with no belt, what are you gonna do? Let's talk about why that happens. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the most common problem, which is actually belt length. Sometimes you might have a belt that's just a little too long, it's kinda hard to tell when you're installing it, but once you go to actually use it, it's gonna throw just because of the length. The tensioner can't keep up and it'll just max out and your belt will just kind of go haywire. So you can see here, we have a belt on this right here. It looks good, nice and tensioned on here. You can see it's about in the middle of the sweep. Once it tightens up, right? You can see right here the notches, it's about in the middle. However, what you want to check is, turn your wrench to the other direction and pull that sucker back. If you can get it all the way back here and you can see how it's maxing out on the tensioner right there, you don't want that. That's actually too long of a belt. The second most common problem is belt routing. Let's say you have a belt, you go to put it on with the incorrect routing, it's gonna to be too short, it obviously won't go on. If it does go on, it probably means it's too long and the tensioner's not gonna be able to tension it correctly and it's gonna get thrown off. The third thing we're gonna look at is the tensioner. Now, let's say you have an old tensioner on your new bracket kit. If it's old and used, it's gonna be a lot less effective. If you can go over here and push this thing and move it quite a bit, it's probably too old and you need to replace it. Another thing to remember with the tensioner is rapid deceleration could cause a belt to be thrown. Let's say you're at the track, you're running high RPM, and you let off that throttle right to idle, that thing is gonna whip back to all the way loose and that belt can probably just throw right off. The fourth thing I wanna talk about is your balancer. There's two things to remember with this. One thing is we wanna make sure it's pressed on all the way. The first way is with your torque spec. Now GM specifies a 240 foot pounds and an extra 140 degrees after that to get the balancer seated correctly. Now when you're torquing down your balancer, you're gonna use one of these. This is our flywheel holding tool. It bolts to the two starter holes on the block and it locks into the teeth of the flywheel here and it prevents that crank from moving so you can get lots of torque onto that balancer bolt. Also, what you can do is take off your balancer bolt here and measure between the balancer snout and the front of the bolt face. Now the way you wanna do this is you wanna grab these of the calipers, take your bolt off like I said, and you wanna measure from this face right here to the face of the crank snout right there. So we're gonna take our calipers right here. We're going to measure from one face to another. So that comes out to be 0.144, which is right in the middle of our spec of 0.093 to 0.174. The second thing with the balancer is make sure you have the right balancer on there. Let's say you have truck accessories, but a Corvette or a Camaro balancer, obviously your belt's not gonna be in alignment and it's gonna wanna go all over the place. When it comes to balancers, we definitely recommend using a factory GM balancer. We've seen some aftermarket replica balancers don't quite line up and you're gonna have issues like a thrown belt. The fifth thing we're gonna look at is parachuting pulleys. One thing to remember with your parachuting pulley is you can actually over press them on or not press them on all the way. One thing you wanna look at is your shaft of your parachuting pump matches up with the front face of the hub on this pulley. Another thing is you can't swap parachuting pump pulleys. So let's say you try to put a Camaro parachuting pump pulley on a truck parachuting pump. While the diameter of the shaft is the same, the offset of the ribs versus the hub is different and it will create misalignment in your belt. Another instance of this, let's take this fifth gen Camaro parachuting pump. I have a truck parachuting pump pulley here different shaft size, and obviously that's not gonna work. Now for number six, we're gonna look at your water pump. Let's say you're using a Camaro water pump with a truck setup, and so you're using water pump spacers behind the water pump to push it out in line with the belt. So if you have the incorrect spacers, it could push it up too far or not enough, causing the belt to ride off the back or off the front of the water pump and eventually throw the whole belt. One final problem you might see is with incorrect installation of our bracketry. I get it, you don't wanna look at the instructions, they're boring, but if you don't get this stuff in the right spot, you're gonna have misalignment and your belt's gonna throw. So make sure you use the instructions, look at them carefully, use our guides on the sides that show lengths, and put this together correctly, you'll have no problems. Now, you've gone through all these steps, if you're still having issues, be sure to call us at IC2 Billet, we'd be glad to help you out. We need to do our... From the top. All of it, all of it over again. Uh -huh. Then you dirt it dirt if you're dirt to dirt. Well, that's not how you take it off, it's not real. Let's talk a wipe. Let's talk a wipe. <laughs>
Let's talk about <laughs> what is my problem. <laughs> That's a wrap, people.